Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Rogue Tech. So when last we left off, our secondary lance just pulled a mission off on a planet against a bunch of pirates. It was a well, well um, fought fight. And we picked up some cash. So we've got enough here now. I've repaired all the mechs and everything with the exception of the cataract. And we've got uh, a fair bit of cash stowed away here. So we're going to go to engineering. And now we're able to get our last component, the high G burn drive upgrade. So we're going to purchase that. And once that's fixed, we're going to be able to get our KF drive online, be able to do some jumping on our own. So we still got enough cash here left for the next month's uh, report. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull off another quick mission, and then we're going to leave this planet. So let's go to contracts real quick. I already have an idea of what we're going to do here. So we're going to go with Weakest Link. And this is an assassinate mission. So a member of the uh, Hegemonian chain of command in back of you has been troubling us. We need this irksome operative eliminated. Local government intelligence operatives have located the target's position planet side. So we're just going to jump down there and kill this guy real quick. We're going to negotiate this, and we're going to go for maximum salvage. Uh, I'm hoping that this is a, an assault mech. Chances are it's probably a heavy, but we want to get as much salvage as we can, giving us the best chance to pick up more mech parts to get more into the uh, heavy range. So we're going to accept this. And we're going to go with our main lance on this one. We're going to unload everybody here. And we're going to go with the Warhammer, the Griffin, the Wolverine, and the trebuchet and I'm hoping that we get a catapult because um, I want to replace the trebuchet with a catapult um, and then these last two mechs down here can be just pretty much anything um, the Wolverine and the Griffin are actually working out fairly well here uh, but you know we'll see how it goes so let's uh, deploy and get this mission done all right here we go oh great I hate this map all right so that looks like a Black Knight to me, or an Eris. So there's two ways you can run this map. Well, there's more than that, but there's really two ways that I've run this map. One, you can blast your way in here and try and take this guy on and have to deal with two levels of reinforcements firing down on you. The other way to do it is to sneak along here as best you can and crest over the hill this way. Because when this guy retreats, he tries to get up this way, so you block his, his avenue of escape. You can engage these guys directly and not have to worry about the reinforcements on this side until a little later. The only thing is, is that they may have good sensors and spot you before you get there. So you really need to just creep along the wall here, right, as far as you can go. Keep everybody in a line. Heads up. I got a sensor trace. So he gets sensor traces, but they don't spot us, right? Double time. Let's go. Now I'm assuming in later missions where you've got much better pilots and stuff, they're definitely going to be spotting us before that. So it sounds like the, con the uh, c contact or the combat music has already started. Okay, so let's see here. So that's a 75 tonner, yeah. So I don't think they've quite... I don't think they've seen us yet. So we're going to stay right in the woods. It's going to go right along the wall here. Okay, he's spotting more guys up over here. 45 and a 55 tonner. Those are definitely his uh, bodyguards. Let's move. So it's much easier to do this mission with lighter mechs Order. because you can get up this side faster and there's uh, the opponents have far less sensors so they don't spot you right away. I don't think they've spotted us at all because they haven't moved. Got it. Okay, so we're going to keep going along here. As soon as we move out and up here like this, they're going to start to see us. So um, I think we're at the point where we can actually do that now. Right, let's move. You just have to be careful coming up this way, you can get caught in a crossfire depending on the mechs you're facing. Yeah, they're starting to move now. Yes, so, you, you can get caught in a crossfire, so you just need to be careful. Standing by. But we've got really good mechs for this. We've got really good, powerful, Standing. direct fire mechs. I mean, at this point, you could be sensor locking and LRMing people, but... That's not my style. 
Acknowledged. Okay, that guy might crest up there. If he does, he's dead meat. So the idea over here, I mean, they've got vehicles and stuff coming on this side. I can hear them. The idea is to get everybody to crest at the same time, so they all move into this area. Whether you want to attack this guy straight up by moving down into here and trying to get some defense, or move up past him and get up here and try to take out his his um, bodyguards. But uh, the goal is to just try and... Can we see that guy at all? I thought there was an area here where we could see him. There was something. Oh, from back here. Hmm. So let's get up here. My Warhammer might be able to kill him. So then a 50-ton vehicle. That's part of this group here. There's one more over there somewhere too. So we're not quite as fast as I would hope we'd be coming up here, and they spotted us relatively earlier. So we're not going to crest at the same time, but our three mediums will crest. Kintaro, nice. Dude, should have stayed at home. Just saying that. Just saying. A tickle. That was a tickle. Let's give this guy a tickle, though. He wants to play the tickle game. We can play the tickle game. Here we go. Let's leave off the medium for now. That was more of a scratch than a tickle, but whatever. 45 tonner coming around and making an attempt to help. So that is an... What is that? Insazi? That's a 45 ton? I thought it was 55 tons. Yes, Commander. That's fine. I'm gonna sprint it up here. And we'll say hello to this guy. We need to get rid of him, so fire everything. Is that enough for a knockdown? Nope, not quite. Reporting critical hit. So this guy's moving. 75 tonner. Let's do this. We want these guys gone. So let's do this. This guy's unstable. This is basically free shots. He's going down! You sure did! With seven chevrons of evasion, I think he should probably be okay from the Black Knight down there. So Fulcrum coming in, what's this guy got? Large... LRM-10, maybe? Large, medium, LRM-10, and a tag. Okay. Actually pretty good arm, pretty good frontal armor. What's up, boss? Alright, let's get you up here. It's not going to be a rear arc, is it, if I go there? Man, it's a hard choice. Let's go here. Could go here, though. Don't think that guy's going to be able to see me on that side. So let's fire this this guy. Look at this guy. He's going to die here. We're going to CT him. Let's just get rid of him. Okay, so one bodyguard gone. I don't. I want the Black Knight. Oh, here comes some melee. Yep, big mistake. But, hey, you do you, buddy. Okay, so Flatliner, we're not going to yep. get to crest the hill. Uh, can we get direct fire on that guy anywhere? From over here we can. Let's do that. So we're going to unload on this guy. We're going to fire everything. The shot. So 
So my thought behind this one is, we're going to make them unstable. And then we're going to use, that's a 65 ton vehicle. We're going to use ground zero, since he can't actually crest the hill to do anything. We're going to move up to here. And we're going to do a called shot, or an offensive push on this guy, to push him back a turn. He's got six points on his leg, we can probably take the leg maybe. But the idea is to push him back a turn so we can fire on him before he move, before he gets a chance to move next turn. And we can probably take him out and we can probably step on that vehicle. Uh, I don't know if we can step on it, but... Oh, you do get a chance to shoot him from behind. Yikes. Okay, you missed, thank God. Anyways, we should all go before that uh, Ensazi does anyway, so he's going to die hard. So, let's go with height first. I want to get you around over here. We're going to stay away from the uh, Black Knight for now. I want to work on these guards. When I go after the Black Knight, I want to be able to, to uh, maximize salvage on them. So, we're just going to kill these guys as fast as we can. And then we'll have time to pick and choose on the Black Knight what we decide to shoot for. Whereas we're in a position like this, we have to worry that... Uh, you know, we can get shot in the back or other things and we'll end up taking more damage. So, let's see what this guy's going. He's going to retreat as far as he can, I guess. Okay, not bad. Let's get our, um... Waiting for orders. Griffin... I think we'll probably be okay here. I know I said that last time, but I'm thinking we're going to be okay here. We'll turn our side to that guy just to make sure he doesn't get us. I know our back is to the end, Sazi, right now, but I feel pretty confident that he's not going to hit us. Let's take a risk with the Gauss Rifle. Nice. Excellent. Okay, Flatliner first. He's not going to move. And is going to feel the full weight of this guy. Fire everything, including the small. So there goes the engine. He's done. Alright, let's see what the Black Knight does. Still got a 65 ton vehicle coming in here. I have no idea what it is yet. And we're not going to engage the Black Knight yet. We're going to move forward. I want this vehicle gone. I'm going to fire everything on him. Finally getting a chance to engage for real now. Okay, so that guy's gone. So you notice our resolve is building up here too. The other thing too is we want to, before we engage this guy, is get a half decent amount of resolve because we want to be doing a lot of uh, offensive pushes. So we're going to reserve um, just because we want to take legs and stuff off. So he may only have one guard unit. It looks like that might be it. Okay. That hurts, but we'll take that shot. Uh, it's not minimal damage, man. Your arm's almost gone. What do you got in there? Two medium pulse. Can't lose those. 178 in the front. So we're going to move uh, Vanskater first. Going to back him up here. And we're going to go like, I think... Like this. Get our stability back. We're going to fire straight in the front. Oh, well, there you go. So it's just leader time. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Do a little bit of moonwalking, I guess. And let's get ground zero up. We want to move as much as we can. Minimize the damage returning to us. Moving down into here. So we're going to do an offensive push. And we're going to try for leg. Or should we go for the head? I could attempt to leg this guy, but I'm thinking probably... Let's try for head hits to see what we got on this guy. Okay, he's unsettled. So let's bring Flatliner down into here. Double time. I want to turn his right side because his left side's got the missile launchers. So we're going to do an offensive push on this guy again. 
Gonna go for headshots. Fire again. And steady, stressed. Skipper. And we're gonna come down here where we can see him directly. Got a feeling we're gonna burrow through this guy's side. Once again, we're gonna do an offensive push. Mm, or should I? Probably. We have a good chance to hit. Turning off one medium laser, fire everything. You could not even one hit hit with anything. Really? At least he's panicking. Oh, he's not going anywhere. He's bugging out. He's not bugging anywhere. Alright, we got an offensive push. Gonna go try and leg him this time. Okay, right torso destroyed, right leg destroyed. So that's one pilot hit, and then another one when he falls. Oh, he bailed out. Nice! You're not coming to be back. What are you talking about? I'll be back. So there you go. That's how you do that one. Um, it might have been different if you had a second lance, but you notice that he didn't move up off that platform and wasn't engaging. So if you're up here, um, chances are you won't have to face him right away. You can just face these other guys over here and take them out before you face the main mech. Okay, so that was well played. 126,000. That should cover all of our dam or any damages that we incurred. Okay, experience. Not that great. We didn't take any components or anything like that. All right, now for the good stuff. So we got a chance to get lots of Black Knight parts. But we're going to see what we got down here. Black Knights generally have lots of good gear on them, so we want to check out components down here. Uh, reflective armor, energy resistance, kinetic resistance. That's not bad. Guardian ECM, we definitely need those. So we're going to take that. Fusion core, eh. ECM. If we, don't, if we don't have anything else, take double heat sinks. That's the other possibility, too. Patchwork materials is nice. Composite structure. I don't want to lose the structure points on my mech though. Maybe patchwork? Or just a couple of double heat sinks even. We need lots of double heat sinks. Can always use those. So we didn't get much off that guy. I think at this point though we're going to go for cash, take the engine, and how much is this worth? 600,000. Patchwork's worth a fair bit. 1.3 million. Double heat sinks we could take. ECM's not worth that much. Reflective armor. Worth nothing, pretty much. Um, hmm. What else do we have up here again? The medium laser. Large laser double. We don't really need that. This Gauss rifle. I mean, it could be a backup. We, do we really need it though? Don't think we do. Large pulse laser, we don't really need it. So yeah, let's just go with... Um, hmm, let's just take a double heatsink. We'll, re we'll resist the cash draw and we'll just go with a double heatsink because we could always use that somewhere along the line. Ah, one Black Knight part, that's it, eh? Well, better than nothing. Hey, we got the Gauss Rifle though. Uh, medium ER, which is good. Small pulse, we can probably sell. LM, double 10. Mm, stability damage, not bad. LRM5. So yeah, oh, we got the second ECM too, which is good. We can put that in our lighter mechs. And another double heatsink. Excellent. Alright, 11,000 in repairs or 12,000 repairs. Not bad, not bad. And we're back. Okay, cool. So, 800,000 in the bank. Let's go to the store real quick. We're going to sell some stuff. Alright, so let's go down here. I'm thinking I'm just going to sell the blackjack. There's no point in hanging on to him anymore. I'm not going to use him anymore. So we're just going to sell that blackjack, get rid of him for 500 grand. And the Panther 5T, chances are we're never going to use this guy again. We do have the 9L and the Venom, and we have a Cataract now. We'll have another Trebuchet, so we don't really need the Panther at all. So we're going to sell that. And I think we're going to sell the Dagger too. Uh, you know what? I'm nostalgic. We're going to keep him. So let's see here. What else we got here? We can sell... Flame breath we want to hang on to. I think I'm going to drop that into the um, the fire starter. Clan Goss, regular Goss rifle, light Goss rifle. We're not going to use the light Goss at any way. 12 tons for 50 damage is not really worth it, even though it only generates 5 heat. So we get rid of that. we got a large pulse, regular medium lasers. i got to put this in a mech somewhere. Medium pulse, small. 
small pulses. I'll go hang on to those, I guess. Clan machine guns, which are really light. Regular LRM5. Let's just sell that. Hmm. Regular machine guns. When? Ah, oh, I'm gonna hang on to those. Just for, I don't know. We, we may we we may decide to build a machine gun boat somewhere along the line. So we'll just hang on to it. ERPPC. Yeah, let's just hang on to it for now. Um, rocket launchers, not a big deal. Streaks, hang on to those. Can sell a couple of SRM sixes. Thunderbolt missile launchers, we're hanging on to for now. Um, the engines down here was another thing we were going to sell. Cockpit, we're hanging on to. The exchanger, we got to put into something pretty soon. That's probably going to end up going in the fire starter at some point. But so we got a 260. So there's another one, an engine that we can sell. The reason why I'm trying to get well, maybe we should hang on the two 270s because we've got two more mechs coming out that could probably utilize something like that. So we'll hang on to it. Got an additional 300 that we can sell. And what else? So the mechs that are going to be coming out, I want to get that last mech bay up and running, which is why I'm trying to sell a lot of stuff here, trying to get enough money to do that. So yeah, and then ammo will keep. Okay, so we did pretty good there. Looks like we may have to do another milk run at some point, um, just to be able to get uh, that um, last mech bay up and running. Let me get the cataract back. We're gonna have a look at the cataract right now before we uh, end the episode. So let's go to the mech bays. Now we talked about maybe putting an AC-20 on this guy. So let's have a look really quick here. It's a pirate configuration. It's supposed to be spiky, which means it does more melee damage. So it would make a really nice melee mech. I mean, if we want to get really goofy with this guy, so let's just let's take the um, fusion core gives it what top speed of 195. Let's pull this guy out for a second. I want to try something really weird here, really, really quick. So let's go to equipment. I'm gonna grab our engine, and that was what a 270. Let's grab a 300, 22 tons. We're gonna to drop that in there, and then what I want to do is I want to go to components, drop in some hardened armor, and heavy ferro. Okay, we're gonna max out the armor on this guy. And take one off the back. I guess two off the back. We can take it out the center back. So that's going to give us. Oh, sorry, we can't. It either has to be hardened or right. That makes sense. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, let's get that back up. So now we got uh, double the protection per ton of armor. So it's going to double all the all the uh, armor values on here. And then what we do is we go down here. We can throw an endo steel. And we're going to throw a mask in here. Um, I'm thinking this fusion core might be too small now. It's giving him 210. So let's take that out. Let's go to a bigger fusion core. What's the biggest one we have here? 380. Let's drop that in. Why not? Oh, we're now we're way over. So maybe we're not. <laughs> maybe we're not doing that. Actually, wait. If we have an X, we got an XL engine, right? Wait, it's in here, right? Or is it? Do we have an XL engine? We don't. We have an XL gyro. Ah, right. We're not going to be have anywhere near what we need to be able to do that. So let's take that out. Once I get a better XL engine, I think we'll drop that in. But right now, let's just drop this back in. So I mean, that's not bad. If we turn this guy into a punch bot with ma like you could take this guy on a mission by himself probably. And if you go to uh, weapons, you could load up like a plasma lance in each arm, let's say. Let's go back to equipment and just put the regular arm hand. Oh, we can't put arm hands in this side, but we can put a regular, we would put a regular, um, oh, arm lower, we got it, right? Let's do that in there. And then what else would we do here? With an XL engine that would really reduce the, the uh, core. I mean, you could do Rather than the spiky cockpit, you could put a um, DNI. Probably would be better, I think. If you took the spiky cockpit out, you could put the DNI cockpit in. Increase your chance to hit. ECM Guardian would definitely need. Um, 
defensive gyro, if we took the other gyro out, this would probably be better for close. We lose a bit of time, we lose a lot of tonnage that way. I mean, we're almost maxed out as it is. So this guy would have to be a run-in and punch bot. Uh, movement is what is not very good right now, but with the uh, plus 40% sprint, plus 50% walking distance, it might actually work out half decent. Like you could just put a uh, exchanger in. Oh, you couldn't put an exchanger in. Um, it's a regular heat sink engine, but you could put reg two regular he more heat sinks in the center torso, right? But it does add to the weight, though. That's weird. So if we lower our back armor slightly, wow, it's like two takes out two per uh, click, eh? Wow, okay. Oh, right, because it's double. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, it doesn't have much firepower in the way of, like, being able to hit guys. But, I mean, if you put an XL engine in this thing, um, triple strength Myanmar is a shield, anything else that's going to give you damage, this guy could be pretty dangerous up close. But we're not going to do this. We're just going to uh, leave this for now. All right, so we talked about replacing the Vindicator. The Vindicator did have triple plus PPC, uh, ER medium laser, and an LRM 15, which we won't be able to use on this guy anymore. But the, the Trebuchet 7K, I think, oh, it's only got one missile slot. I thought it had two. We'd have to do a, this would have to be a major refit. So we'd have to pull a Vindicator 7K and the 5S out of the, line, out of the lineup. The 7K's missiles, long-range missiles, would go into the uh, 5S, and this would become our second missile boat, replacing or very similar to the uh, 5N. And then the 7K would become the scout mech. The Vindicator we'd pull out of the line with all his gear on it would probably be going into the Cataract. So that's going to be your major refit, but we're not going to do that right away. We'll worry about doing that later uh, once we... Um, get our high G burn drive into place, go through the next financial report, um, and we'll probably refit a bunch of mechs once we get our next um, mech bay up and running. Uh, but until that time, I'm going to just uh, end the episode here. And if you liked it, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. It always helps me out. And um, yeah, so I'll see you all again next time.